Good afternoon, namaste, and welcome to my channel. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Kaz, and I've been living in India as a solo female traveller now for three years. So I have some experience, for sure, of living and travelling in India. Those of you that do know me, welcome back to my channel. Today's vlog is all about don't make these 10 solo travel mistakes. I'm bringing you this vlog from the Himalayan regions of India in the state of Himachal Pradesh. So here goes with the top 10. Number 10, perhaps don't hang out at street sellers shops for too long. The quality of the goods might not be what you are used to back in your home country and your statutory rights might not be the same as your statutory rights back in your home country. I have had these experiences with sellers so please don't repeat my mistakes. Number nine, learn the local language. It will help you out in any given situation. Okay. Number eight, don't accept drinks from anybody. <laughs> Except from reputable dubbers. The thing is, is we don't always know the people around us when we're solo traveling. Therefore, it can just make us that little bit more vulnerable. So, for example, somebody might have bought a drink in a bar and then they put some intoxication in that drink and then offer you the drink. Unfortunately, these things can happen to us when we travel. So it perhaps is best just to avoid that one altogether. Avoid alcohol and other intoxicants. The issue with travel and alcohol is that it can put you in a really vulnerable situation. You might choose to do things that you don't usually do under the influence and therefore it may compromise your safety. Avoid isolated places. This may sound like common sense, but when you're on a journey of uh, exploration we just need to be aware that we don't venture deeply into these isolated places just again for safety reasons and whilst on that note it really is a good idea not to go out in the dark so evening time might seem very exciting night time might seem very exciting but the reality of the situation is is we don't know the characters that are around us again no matter how fun loving places may seem in the evening and night time it perhaps isn't a good idea exploration is always a good idea in the daytime avoid lifts on bikes no matter how friendly or convincing the bikers are the reality of the situation is that you are in a different country and you don't know those people. Only accept rides in taxis and autos from the official stand. The issue with that is, is we don't know whether it's false, the ones that actually come down the road and stop you and say that they can take you somewhere great. We don't know if they're false autos. We don't know if they're false taxis. All official ones are going to be at the stands always aim to try and blend in with the crowd so perhaps don't dress too differently because again if people can see that you're a traveler they may again just try and target you which will just waste your time 
So, for example, when I was in Varkla in Kerala, there were a lot of Indian people on the beach, all dressed in their beautiful saris. And then there was a tourist jogging on the beach in her bikini. <laughs> so that is a fine example of how you can just be so targeted when it looks so obvious because you're not blending. Always use your intuition. If something does not feel right to you, it more than likely is that it isn't correct. So, you know that gut feeling that you get? Always go with your gut feeling. And in situations like that, if people are pestering you and harassing you, you just say no. It is very, very empowering to say no and to respond to that gut feeling. And it's also great for your safety. And number one, try and be aware of scams. For example, you are the most vulnerable when you land in a new place. So scammers kind of know that these are the places to hang out at. So for example, somebody might target you and say, why don't you come with me? I will take you to a place which is really, really nice. It's excellent accommodation. And if you go along, the charge of that hotel may be extortionate because they also have to give commission to the person who's brought you into that hotel. And these are scams simply because commission rates can be really, really high. If you were the sort of person that would rather find your accommodation on arrival at your new place, you can actually download an app called MapsMe and you don't need a SIM card for it. It's an offline map and therefore you can then say no to these commissioners who will charge extortionate rates to find you your room. So I hope these travel tips have been really, really helpful for you and it has been really informative for you if you like the video then please give it a thumbs up i would be very grateful for that i'm very grateful if you subscribe to my channel and if you do the bell notification it means that you will never never miss a video of mine especially when i give lots and lots of information so shanti 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 om namo shivaya namaste thank you for watching and See you on the next vlog. Bye for now.